Hello, welcome back to a nomad tale. In this episode, we're going to ratchet up the PvP by aiming for bigger kills. We're going to take an honest look at how to run alts with just isk. And we're gonna continue to enjoy the sights, the sounds, and the smells of lands less wandered. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. There's a f***ing paladin ratting like right next to my new house. What are you doing? Oh, he must have just cleared one, I think. That's probably what happened. There's a stork. Ooh. Well, these guys are about about it. Nice to kill that, wouldn't it? Oh shit. Gotta decloak? No. Ooh. Yo, no way is this gonna work. No way, no way, no way. Going for it, I'm going for the ram. Go! That's a legit kill. I gotta kill this thing hella fast. Is he bringing ships here? Is that his plan? Or is he looting it? What's he doing? He's just trying to bait me on the paladin, I guess. Got a corm. Oh, they're ready to battle. They're ready to do battle. This is what people just do, they just sit at zero with fucking marauders. Okay, well. Alright, so we have found another ghost site here. And, um, while I would like to go to Jitta and refit my Loki for this purpose, I also don't feel like dumping 800,000 skill points into hacking and buying a 200 million hacking module, another 100 mil in Loki fits, coming out here and opening a can and getting nothing for it. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go to this ghost site. And I'm going to try to look at the contents of the boxes this time and see if I can find one of those juicy blue uh, implant blueprints instead of just going for the highest value can. I think I have to actually increase the size of that loot window. Hmm. All right, so if we scan him, we should get the window and we can increase the size. Nice, look at that. Let's just do it like that, I guess. I should do. Okay, nothing in this one. Nothing in the second one. Magpie. Is it worth anything? What is this? Yeah, I don't think we got anything actually from this one. That sucks. I didn't see anything of value in here. All right, well, let's just try to hack this. <gasps> no. Oh, we didn't. We didn't do that. Oh. So sad because I know I'm gonna have to show this. Like I can't hide from this. I have to. I have to own this mistake. 
Fortunately, we didn't hit any of the uh, really valuable blueprints, right? Yeah. Um, so, okay, that's oof, awkward. Okay, somehow I have managed to find another ghost site already. A few hours after the other one that I screwed up. So, we get a little bit of redemption. Now, we're going to do it in a tier 3 cruiser this time. And I just put some modules on it that should be able to tank the rats. And pretty much stripped everything else off because we don't want to lose anything too valuable. Um... Should we screw this up? But basically the plan is to go in, sit there, scan, 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 scan all four cans, find the one with the blueprints in them. The uh, good blueprints, I think it's ascendancy. Yeah, we're really just looking for the high grade ascendancies. Okay, let's do one last check. We have a data analyzer. We have a cargo scanner. We have virus strength. We have a mix of tank. Should be able to tank that. I guess my only concern is that I won't be able to speed tank with the AB, but I think we're just gonna have to endure it and hope we don't die. <laughs> See how this goes. Quite a bit more risk than a little baby cheetah. Okay, let's do this. Number one, number two, number three has a widow in there, I guess. Number four, pack rat. Dang, we didn't get anything. I guess the pack rat's better. I don't know. Let's go for the pack rat one. I really don't know which is better. We can get two. Our hacking is just so bad though, I don't know if that's happening. Look at that, holy crap. That's not good. I've screwed away. Oh, oh. Uh, this one? We're only one minute, ten seconds. Ooh, that was a lot of damage. Maybe we get one. I'm just gonna speed go through this one. It was cool that we got to see it blow up though. Never lucky, never lucky, never lucky. Never lucky. Never lucky. The timer. With timer. Oh, shit, it's right there. I missed it. It's right here. Oh, no. We got it. Go, go. Leave. Rats haven't come. Look at all this time. It's been two minutes. Hmm. So we didn't get the pack rat. It's been two minutes, 20 seconds since I decloaked. That was a long time. Maybe I should have just stayed and kept going. That's okay. Let's not be greedy. I kind of wanted to see what the rat's damage was like, but I'm pretty sure this tank would have held. All right, so we didn't get ascendancy, but now we actually understand how to run these. Take your time, and um, I'm going to have to get my data hacking up. There's just no way around it. Ship. Weird is that? Weird one.
Okay, I just spent way too long trying to figure out why my ventures couldn't orbit these clouds properly. And then I realized that... This is a thing. My ventures were like... <laughs> they're hauling out to like 4,000 meters a second, I didn't notice. And they couldn't wrap the cloud properly. <laughs> yeah, so I'm over here thinking my pass is messy. This pass. Look at this place. There's a freaking Naglfar, a bunch of Praxi, a bunch of shuttles. This looks like a museum. A bunch of cruisers. I mean, like, damn. Why not just put, like, can, like ship maintenance arrays and cover hangers and store all that stuff? Crazy that they let you see every ship they have, you know? Anyway, I am ridiculously happy that I came across this little shortcut. So if we make a fleet here, create fleet. I was originally right clicking and inviting each one of these guys. If I just grab all of them and drag them in here, look at this. Boom, 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 fleet fully formed. Three seconds. So nice. I just noticed this guy popped into a fresh hole here, or rather from a fresh hole, and has uh, started rolling said hole. <laughs> Yo, he just, did you see that? They finished rolling it while I was trying to scan it down. We got to see that hole get rolled on the solar system map in real time. Pretty cool. So I just saw this Praxis come through here and I'm pretty sure he's cloaked like right, oh there he is, look. Where's he gonna go? He just trapped himself over here. Where you gonna go? Where you gonna go? Into the freaking sun. I think he just rolled himself out of his own hole. I swear he just did that. Oh, we can camp both holes. Perfect. He's stuck in here. He's got to come through one of these holes. Hey, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Did he cloak up again? Must have cloaked up again. I could have played that better, I'm sure, but... Damn, I can't believe he just straight logged. Like shit, bruh. I just saw a raven and a Kovops go through this hole from this side to this side. And that's from my hole to a class five. Not sure what um what's going on, but quite a lot of activity here right now. Yeah, oh there's the raven again. Hey, wouldn't that be cool to kill? Maybe I should real quick put the heavy rage on just in case this sh comes through here. Yeah, this will be like a waiting game. All I saw were Kovops and a Raven. So I don't know if the Raven is a roller. I don't know what's going up. Oh, Heron back on scan. I'm not gonna be able to catch Herons with these things. I'd have to go get the saber for that, but I want the firepower for the Raven. Oh my gosh, the Raven's back. No way. The thing is, I looked the raven up, and it's just like a—it's like a dude mine. It's like a miner. He's just mining stuff. I don't understand where they are. I thought I had every. Oh, there's probably new sites. Yeah, E and K. I don't have. Ah, dang. So even though I scanned this place, to oh, now he's at f 10 to 14. Raven's back. Okay. Okay, so he's at. I think he must have been at that one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look. I'm about to just warp there. Fuck it. I'm curious what's going on. This raven is literally just face-checking holes. No way. No way did he just do that. Right? There's no way did he just actually warp to the hole we're camping. No, I don't think he did. He totally did. 
We're going for it. Gotta get close to the hole. Oh, did I not ram him? I didn't ram him. Crap, he's gonna get through. Possible. Oh, I don't wanna lock the hole. I'm having nightmares here. Oh, somebody came through. Somebody came through. Who is it? Oh, okay. Got to ram him. Not sure what's happening. And now he's locking me. Can we get him? Uh, I'm getting nuded. Is that what's happening? Oh, my my cap's just going because I had my micro on for so long. Got you. We finish him up. Nice. Cool. We tracked him down and killed him. Excellent. I'm going to get my Loki. Yes, off grid. Pull these back. Oh, don't. This drone's back. We can loot that. Kill that. Oh, that was cool. Anything? 34 mil? Whew. Cool. And we're out. Yeah, that was so sick. We got the kill mail. You did? It's always in our room. Always. So, oh, that's nice. Cool. We use these. He had a hundred mm burner, and he couldn't move because I had double web on him. That's pretty sick. So yeah, we kind of hit the jackpot for these relic sites. Six of them, and there's also two regular data sites. Let's see what we get from those. So this is all the loot from those relic sites plus some of the PvP kills we've got. I kind of jumbled it all together. Oh, and um, the ghost site. So about 350 mil. I don't know if Eve Prazel is gonna agree with it. I'm sure it will. So I think I'm catching some drama here in Jitta or Perimeter. Maybe not. They killed somebody. Looks like someone stole the loot. The Mercurial was going for the, the loot can. I'm sitting here in a bustard right next to the gate. I wonder who they shot. Must have been war deck stuff. Let's see if the mock goes through. If you're not aware, mocks are really common, or they used to be really common in high sec because Because they are very maneuverable and they can bump stuff really well. I thought he was about to go for me there. <laughs> I was like, oh Jesus. Look at all these look at all these people. I wonder what they're doing. This is all war deck stuff, right? Yeah. Black flag. Hmm. So this would be a great example of one you should probably consider micro cloak tricking. Perfectly, but obviously they're not going to throw away these ships. These are real ships, but 
I'll, uh, I'll tread lightly here anyway. People are dying. I think we got the micro cloak figured out now. For some reason when I came back to the game I was struggling with micro cloak tricking. A bunch of different things like the orca and occasionally the bustard and I was like getting frustrated but I realized that um, I was just off with the timing just a little bit I was a little bit too late you want to go a little bit too early rather than too late so here's another gate camp it's like they are pretty good uh, we can't get decloaked here but you never know either way we're taking this seriously we're gonna try to click properly and let's go Yo, see how fast that Dramiel gets there? He's burning at 6,000 meters a second. Man, that Dramiel was awfully close to me. Those guys are good. I need to watch that video and see who they were. That was a really gross little camp. By the time they get all the decloak cans up, they're gonna kill a ton of people. So I messaged that Dramiel pilot from that gate camp and he was kind enough to share his fit with me. And I just want to say that this is one of my favorite ships of all time and this fit is so cool for that purpose of decloaking, micro cloak tricking uh, DSTs. I really like this. And uh, shout out to that pilot for being cool and sharing the fit with me, that was cool. We were about to have to renew three accounts in two days. What? There is a Omega sale right now. Which is gonna seriously help us out here. And on top of that, we also got, um, we got 15 days on our main for free because some kind soul used my referral link and upgraded to Omega. So if you are that person, thank you. So the question many people have, including myself, is do I need an alt? Do I need more alts? Uh, are these alts worth it? Those are all valid questions, especially for people, people that are new to the game. They're probably not used to the alt culture, if you will. So I kind of want to run down a foundation for uh, what it means to make alts and be efficient with them. The first thing to think about is if you are making alts and planning on paying for them with ISK, it is significantly more complicated and more work to do so with an average casual or semi-hardcore player's ability. Uh, if you're going to pay for them with real money, I mean, go nuts. I mean, there's no sky's the limit there. You don't even need this section if that's the case. However, a lot of people, like myself even, enjoy the challenge of paying for stuff with ISK. It gives you something to do, gives you goals, and uh, it's also free in the sense that we don't pay money. However, you do pay time. But if you're playing anyway, it kind of balances out. So the first thing to think about is passive versus active income. When you're talking about alts, you obviously want the alt to at least cover most of its omega cost with income, or even better, pay for it completely. And there's two ways to do that. The first one is active uh, income, which would be things like ratting with an Ishtar, or using ventures like I do to mine gas. These activities scale with how often you run the account, right? So if you have 10 alts and you only log on once a month to mine two gas clouds, definitely not going to be worth it. The other style of income you get from alts is passive. And there are a bunch of ways to get passive income. We're only going to talk about two of them right now, but there are other ones um, that you can explore should you go down this avenue. The first one is uh, planetary interaction. Now I don't like doing this in EVE anymore. But assuming proper setup and the willingness to play the daily, weekly login game, you can set up a bunch of planets, max your alts on planetary interaction, 
and take a huge chunk out of your Omega every month just for scooping the loot and selling it. The second form of passive income we're going to talk about is something called skill farming. We're not actually going to go into detail as to how this works because there's plenty of other guides on this, but the general idea is that you make an alt, you get it to 5 million skill points, you remap it to a certain set of attributes, and then you train a skill that uses those attributes indefinitely at maximum skill training speed. What this does is every time you hit 500,000 skill points, you use an extractor, turns it into an injector, you sell the injector, keep the profit. Um, the PI plus a skill farm pretty much covers your account, I do believe, although I haven't ran the numbers on PI lately. But those two things alone can pretty much pay for your alts. You add active income on top of that and uh, it actually is a surplus, assuming you play a lot like I do. It's a major surplus. Another side of alts that um, is known, but I guess not talked about uh, as much, is the kind of the ISK intangible uh, benefits, I guess you would call it. The things that don't actually give you income, but provide quality of life, benefits, safety for other things you do. Um, examples of this would be scouting your orca through wormholes, or use, you're scouting through nullsec even, or like having an alt pick up MTUs. These are things that don't actually give you income strictly, but they make another activity way more streamlined and safe. So in a way, you're actually getting a huge benefit that your wallet won't notice. The last thing about alts that I want to talk about is the idea of diminishing returns. Um, there is a point where you can have too many alts and you can't use them all. Like for example, if you had 500 alts, you couldn't possibly do the PI. Like you wouldn't have enough time in the day to do that for 500 characters, right? So there is an arbitrary limit uh, to the number of alts you can have and also manage and still have fun and not turn it into some boring grind that you're not going to want to do. There's also other types of diminishing returns. For example, uh, how can you control 10 characters in the field, right? It might be really hard to do that in combat. Now, there are guys that do that. I know that. They're very good, but that's not you and me. Um, for me, controlling two or three characters in combat is is sometimes quite a challenge as you definitely see in my videos. Um, we're eventually gonna get to four combat characters and that's gonna be very difficult for me. But the point is, uh, too many alts is a thing. You have to understand that by not having any alts, you might be missing out on ISK intangible benefits, but by having too many alts, you will not even wanna play the game anymore. It'll become too much. So there's a sweet spot in there for a lot of people it's in the two to three account range, maybe up to four, right? Some people go harder, some people st stick by one account and swear by it. Ultimately, it's up to you. For nomading, you're honestly gonna want two accounts minimally. You, you really should not do this with one account. It'll be way more heartache and hard work than you wanna put into it. So as we go through uh, this adventure together, I'm gonna constantly talk about uh, how to fund your alts and not just fund them, but how to get the most out of them and share advantages that I've found. And hopefully if you're following along and you were thinking about alts after a couple more videos, you'll have a pretty good idea as to what advantages you will unlock by having a couple and if it's worth it or not. So we're going to continue to explore that. I found this dude just sitting here. Not sure what he's doing, but I think I'm gonna try to kill him. Oh, rod sword. Okay, I see what's going on. I just need to be able to web this guy so he doesn't get back through. And I still got like four minutes to do it. Because he's gonna win on polarization. It is. Who is it? Onyx. Yeah, they're bringing mad people. I don't think I'm gonna be able to deal with this. Sadly, I think I uh, chickened out on this one.
they're gonna close it. Darn. Oh man, I didn't close it? So now I'm gonna send the broadsword through. People, that's the third. It's the third one. Uh, he literally ran into my my Loki ran into him. My Proteus ran into him and decloaked. It still didn't collapse. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, I don't think I can stop those um, Dictors. Sorry, Hictors. I feel like they're just too fast. Like, even if they micro, and um, I get an instant lock on them, the web still takes like three ticks to apply, and they're literally like already at the thing, and then I have to get through the tank, and yeah, I can put two webs on them, but they can pull more pictures through the wormhole to start fighting me if they wanted to. I mean, ideally with these two ships, I want to catch rolling battleships more than Hictors, I think. I really don't think I had much of a plan or a, a chance there. Well, on this venture, presumably mining one of these. I don't know if it's worth trying to even kill him, but... Hmm... I guess he's gotta die. Can I bring the Proteus for the micro? Oh, it's got the black hole effect, so he's not gonna be able to warp out as quick. Might work. <laughs> Alright, he's pretty freaking- he's not even moving. Okay, well I guess he's gonna die. Gotta go for the bump though. Oh, he's moving now. Did I get the bump? Did I miss it? Oh, I missed it. All right, no venture kill, that's okay though. We'll keep the Protoss on the other side. When you live out in Anoikis, you have to scan a lot. I've said that a couple times, but um, you have to actually really enjoy doing this. If you hate scanning, you will never want to play out here. Like we have to scan hundreds of signatures every day to do what we do out here. Um, and I kind of like it actually. I kind of like just scanning this stuff down and bookmarking it and logging it and building a little map and then coming back and taking advantage of it later. Like, for me, that's fun. But, um... I just feel like I should really emphasize how much scanning you have to do because in uh, some of my clips, uh, I don't necessarily show you how much scanning is required to unlock the stuff we're doing. So like scanning down a system here, I mean I seriously do this like 20 times a day minimally on my own and we build like a pretty decent map nowadays and that's how we're able to get, you know, PvP opportunities, gas income, good connections to Jitta, and so on and so forth. But um, really you gotta, you gotta like scanning and what I do personally is I usually just put on like uh, a relaxed show or uh, um, some music or something like that and uh, just bang out the systems try to do them all try to do the ones that are connected to your system at the start of when you come on and then you can explore later if you run out of stuff but I like to usually go two dimensions deep uh, as often as possible so my system would be zero and then my statics and wanderings would be one and then those connections would be two and by that point, you could have 50 to hundreds of wormholes, possibly. So it really just depends on the day. But yeah, you got to really like scanning. And uh, luckily for me, I do. All right, so here's something a little bit different. The mapping tools that people use in EVE are generally purposed for groups, right? You're using a web app to share data to other players and get a UI out of it that you, sh that you uh, share and manipulate together. One of the problems with this setup is that people are paranoid um, about having that data, uh, like what systems you're in, what ships you're in, etc. accessed by other people. 
what people generally tend to do is they tend to host the open source mappers on their own hardware so that they have control over who accesses the data, right? That's all fine, but honestly, for what we're doing here, solo nomading, almost all of the mapping apps are totally overkill. So I kind of was just like goofing around and I came up with the idea of like a simplified map program for like day trippers and solo players. We pull it up on screen here. Uh, wait, let's just copy the system first. So if you copy this, all right, it gives you a string that looks a little bit like that, right? But if you copy it into a notepad, it looks a bit like that. So we take that, that copy, and then in our program, we simply control V and it parses that HTML string into a system that we can drag around um, and you can right click to recolor it. So we're in a class four, so it'd be that color, right? Now, what I've done next is now you have systems in here and the only way to add them right now is to right click copy that. Um, now that I have that, you can copy the signatures and if you hover your mouse over the system and paste it, you get all of the signatures, right? That kind of just keep going back towards the system itself. What ends up happening is if you copy the systems and put them in here like this, we're just going on with hypotheticals here. You can then start to drag connections, right? And they'll, they'll like self correct. Or they'll try to like tug at each other a little bit. So for example, do something like that and you'll notice these will try to fight for each other and you can kind of play with them, redirect them a little bit, etc. And you can freely edit this with like delete and stuff. Uh, it's very simple, but uh, I kind of like to goof around with stuff like this. And I think that this visual style of day tripper thing, plus the fact that it's not hosted, is actually kind of cool. And I could see people using this if somebody uh, gave it bunch of functionality and uh, allowed you to use it on your own box. That's the buddy system. Proteus sitting right here, ready to defend a little cheetah. I actually just completed that relic site in under two and a half minutes and now I'm stuck here waiting on polarization. <laughs> That's some hardcore cherry picking right there. So I just caught myself um, just sitting here in space, just like looking at stuff. And like, I guess we've been here for weeks now, but I mean, this game is just so phenomenally cool looking. It's just kind of, kind of crazy. Like, yeah, it's just shaders and lighting effects, but next time you hop on EVE, just fly around for a little bit. Just look at stuff. I think it's worth appreciating. So I've been paying close attention to details of how the game is coded and presented to us and obviously one of the main things in JSpace as we've talked at uh, length about is the way wormholes look. And one thing I was a bit unsure about was when the mass quotas are hit and the wormhole shrinks, for me it was a bit hard to understand like the size of it because if it shrunk, I'm like, how do I, there's no point of reference, right? Unless you zoom your ship in and get right next to it, there's really no way to tell how big that thing is unless you memorize the size of it at a certain zoom, right? Um, of course, uh, 
there's a lot of information about this out here, but I did notice, and it's now crystal clear to me, that this inner circle, don't even worry about its motion or bouncing or contracting or anything like that. All you gotta worry about is the size of this inner circle in comparison to the whole wormhole, right? That's all you gotta do. So this inner circle right now, you'll get to know this, but you can, I can tell right now with my limited experience that this hole is still fresh because this center circle here takes up a sizable portion of the overall wormhole. And that is a feel thing, but I'm gonna show you as soon as I find one, what it looks like when it is shrunk or on the verge of collapse. And you'll, it's dramatically smaller. It's contracted to, um, I wanna say like half of this diameter. So we'll, we'll take a look at that here as soon as I find one. So I've been hanging out in these safe spots more and more often. I have a bunch now with a bunch of depots set up. Um, and something I notice is that if your internet is being spotty and booting you out of Eve, or if Eve's being uh, intermittent, don't use these safe spots. Because every time you disconnect, you just get kicked off and someone can combat scan you down, I'm pretty sure, right? Um, instead, we're going to just warp and sit inside the bubble uh, for today while they work on the internet hardware uh, down the road there. But um, normally I would just hang out in space like I've been doing and rely on positioning and etc. to make people not see me as much. But today we're going to rely on the fact that if you get disconnected inside of a POS, you do not get emergency warped out. You're safe. So today is a sad day. My Loki has died. I lost the Loki. Um, it's a really, it's a really long and tragic story about how I died to a fucking ghost site because I don't understand how tanks work. So, uh... Uh, yeah, so I don't know what the heck's going on here, but, um... Pretty sure we just found another ghost site. Alright, I think we're gonna do it. Let's get our keybinds right. And then... Have a data analyzer. We're going... Alright. Time's on. First one, 24. Second one. Pack rat wedu. Okay. Third one. Pack rat wedu. Fourth one. Nothing. Take those pack rats, I guess. Right here. I got any power ups? Nothing. I think we're screwed. Yeah. Okay, go to the next one. See if we can make it. Ooh, boomy. Boomy, boomy, boomy. And I having hacking is actually really screwing me, I think, with how lucky I am fighting these. Oh, it's near. We got one. Nice. Alright, I uh I'm just gonna go for the third one and just see, maybe. Maybe we can get another one. Oh, wait. Actually, they're both pretty bad, but I'll go for this one. I just want to see what happens when the rats come. Come fight me. There they are. Are they going to blow up the can? How does this work? I'm just going to keep hacking and see if they uh, let me. Oh, not going to get far, though. Okay, they got me pointed. Oh, I can still hack, though. I can still hack, though. Oh, they're doing crazy damage. Oh my god. Wait, what? Oh. What's that damage? <laughs> I 
That tank did not survive at all. Hilarious. Yo, we got Rex! <laughs> and we didn't even drop any of our loot. Yo! So I think what did it was they, um... The can hit me. I think they blew up the can next to me. And that chunked through all my shield. And then by that point, I had no chance of healing through their damage. Since I was no longer in shield resists. For a lot of it. While the rapper tried to keep up. I think that's what happened. Wow. Uh... <laughs> wow, this is like... How to fuck up Ghost Sights 101. So since my unfortunate... Well, I guess I can't even call it an accident. Since the uh, unfortunate incident with the Loki and the uh, Ghost Sight, I've kind of been chilling a little bit. I do have to run to Jeddah a couple times to get some stuff, replace the Loki. I have to do some more farming uh, to get my ISK back up after renewing my subs. But um, I hopped on today to hopefully find a high site connection that's easy and to find some gas to mine. And there's only two SIGs in my system. And I don't think I've seen this before in a class four. Both of these signatures are my statics. And there's no other SIGs in here. So, like, if I was actually bearing this hole, like, ratting, like a traditional wormhole uh, player, I could literally just crit both these holes right now and then just go to f***ing town on anomalies, right? Uh, not that there are many in here, but there are quite a few. I just thought that was cool that uh, there's only two SIGs in here and uh, we're in a double static system. Kind of nuts. I'm pretty sure there's a camp in Tama on the north gate. But it might just be like a lone sweeple picking people off. It's kind of hard to tell from Z kill. It's a mix. So we're gonna um, take a look ski. See if we feed here. I love feeding ships. One might say it's all I do. Yeah, there's a big camp. Okay, look at that. So it's gonna be on the north gate. It's always been on the north gate. That's where you come from high sec. It's only a few drones from Jeddah. So we're gonna obviously just run right through it from this side, but when we come back, we're gonna have big problems getting through there, assuming they set up decloak cans and stuff, which they probably have. We're gonna see here in a couple seconds. But obviously there's ways around it, there's stuff we can do, however, ooh, okay. Somebody on the gate. Orax. Just a ton of people running around shooting each other, it's not even a camp. I saw that many people and I figured it was a camp. But um, either way, I would not be surprised when I come back here if there's like a bunch of insta-lock shit on this gate on the other side. So, definitely gonna be careful on my way back. All right, so we've done a little bit of uh, refitting for the Proteus. We have the um, hacking ship, the Cheetah, up to speed. Um, we're gonna wait to buy another Loki for a couple days so I can get like another bill or two in the bank before I start spending the little I have. But um, I'll still have the Proteus to gank people with, like herons and stuff. Um, and I do have the Saber out there as well, so it's not like I can't use both my PvP characters still. Um, but basically, me losing the Loki, yeah, it, it definitely sucks. I'm kind of an idiot, but it's no big deal. I mean, we're just gonna farm some more gas and do some more hacking and get our stuff back and have a jolly old time. And this time, when I get another ghost site, I'm gonna understand that that tank was not enough. I think I've failed ghost sites in every capacity now to the point where there's really no, there's nothing left for me to screw up, I think. So, <laughs> through the power of brute force, we have become a ghost site expert. 
Although we haven't proven it yet, but we will. In time. Alright, we just yoloed it into the into the system. I'm pretty sure with Z kill and everything that there's nobody camping this gate, yeah. A lot of bodies from that guy though, that's pretty funny. Oh, I wonder if the Lancers are gonna go pick up those bodies. I know they're really into those things. Sadly, I don't think they will. They only get mad at you for having bodies. Okay, so I just got back to my house from a trip to Jetta and I realized that I bought two data analyzers at fucking Jetta 4.6 instead of 4.4. Damn it. I feel like somebody's getting ganked right now. I don't know where they are, but... Alright, uh, that bell. Oh, at the station, maybe? Weird. Kinda curious who just got ganked. Also, that wormhole looks super cool. Yeah, go ahead and tell me that wormhole is not cool as hell looking. Oh yeah, get it right up in there. Oh, look at that. And that's um, an example of how the inner circle is actually a fish-eyed reflection of the skybox for the destination. That is a skybox of Verge Vendor right there. You can see it through it and it kind of reflects off. I noticed something really wild that I don't think I've seen yet um, in terms of the mapping. Uh, but today, if we look at the map, it's very small right now because reasons we're about to get to. Um, so our home system, we start off by saying we only have two six, right? Both of our statics, a C5 and a C2. However, the C5 is end of life. Um, so our only true connection out of there is the C2. Now the C2 has a high sac connection, a wormhole back to my home, and then a connection to a class one. Now, maybe that doesn't sound too interesting, but what this means is that I'm currently in a system with effectively only one exit. That exit leads to a class two system with a high sac connection and a connection to a class of system that is largely irrelevant. So essentially, I have a path from my home to high sec with almost no chance I'm gonna run into somebody. They could come through the C5 hole, but to go from there to scan down my system to scan down to C2 to get to high sec, I doubt they're gonna be interested in it when it's end of life. So we almost have a private little route to high sec today, which is really unique. Normally there's wandering wormholes everywhere. Today in both systems, we only have one wandering wormhole. And it's an exit. So essentially this allows us to just make a million trips to high sec totally casually and we can just chill and map stuff really slowly because there's no way anybody's going to come in here. Pretty neat. I have scanned down my system today and what we have here is a last 13 connection. So what I'd like to do is um, I'd like to actually experiment with this a bit further than what I've normally been doing. Um, I'd like to maybe clear some of the gas sites out inside of there. Uh, to do that, I think I'm going to use a Sveeple. I might have the Confessor skills still, I'm not sure, but we're going to look at a ship for that. And I think we're going to spend today trying to see if we can uh, get paid off of this. Because if we can clear out the gas sites, we can send our ventures in and just get oodles of noodles. So uh, let's see how that goes. 
Okay, well, there wasn't enough gas in this C-13 right now to um, justify finding a way to jet in, buying a Sveeple, and fitting it up with faction gear just to take out two gas sites. I don't really like running combat sites, so... So it's not like I'd come out here and um, do a bunch of anomalies and not a relic uh, sleeper sites either. So what I'm going to do instead of all that, we'll come back to that another time when it's a little bit smarter. But instead of that, we're going to come and we're going to ninja both these sites. And then I'm going to actually try for the first time in this series to uh, nin uh, Jedi Mind Trick an instrumental on camera. Um, so hopefully we can see what that looks like uh, together. All right, there's this magnet that's watching me find gas. So I'm gonna go run and grab the Proteus and see if we can frag him real quick. All right, so here's an example of that whole closing the game and rebooting it immediately instead of logging out. I'll show you how it's a little faster. So when the screen went black, that's when we would have normally started the 30 second logout process. But you can tell we're already back. We can already log on like 10 seconds later. Oh no! Oh no, I just realized I can't come kill him with the Proteus. What am I doing? It's a freaking C-13. Oh no! Okay, now I definitely need a Sveeple. I'm putting that on the to-do list. Alright, let's log him out and get the gas back. Alright, Magnate. I'm sorry for trying to gank you. That was, uh, that was rude of me. And not at all related to the fact that I can no longer gank you. Alright, so here we go. We've landed at the cloud. I'll turn the graphics on in a second. Looks decent. I mean, I guess you do have to kind of go past and it's kind of annoying. I get the feeling that it's going to work, but... In fact, I'm going to go ahead and let it orbit manually, or automatically, until they end up getting too close. If they get within like 80 km, then uh, I will start manually piloting. But basically, the idea with this trick is, there's other videos on it, I've watched a couple, and it's pretty straightforward, but um, obviously until you're here doing it, you don't know all the variables. But the idea is to uh, trigger these rats, and then orbit this huge cloud. And these guys just aren't really able to hit you past a certain distance, but at 30 kilometers they will, I do believe, use Eivor, including webs and scrams and stuff, so... Um, if you get within 30 kilometers, you die, basically. Alright, so now they're chasing me again. They are moving pretty fast. Just slightly slower than me, though. That's all that matters. I do believe I'm going to have an issue here. Oh, but what I could do is potentially warp to that. To the center of the cloud if they get too close. Then, uh, jet through the other way. I think that's probably what I'll do. So they're definitely starting to do damage to me. I think I'm going to try to build the other side here in a second, but at the same time, like, they are chasing me. It's kind of what we want. We'll see. I'll let them get a bit closer. So I have a ton more room. So we're in a system now with um, a penalty to shield resists, but a signature radius bonus, so... I kind of hope they would balance out, obviously, without having done the math. But it looks like we could warp now and we'd be, have more space between us. But they're also not gaining any distance on me. But they are hitting me. And obviously, we're literally just using passive shield regen. So I think I'm going to actually corner here. And as soon as the micro kicks off, we will warp for the afterburner, I mean. Let's warp real quick. Get a little distance here. And then I'm gonna try to move to this side of the center of it so that the orbit should theoretically kick me out that way as soon as I get a little bit of distance. So I'm gonna try to get on the other side of the cloud of them. So maybe I'll go down even a little bit. And then something like this, right? And then once that center of the cloud is between us, generous amount, 
we'll go ahead and uh, reorbit. Something like this. I thought I think we should be able to orbit now. So if we orbit, we should get kicked out the opposite vector of where these are because we positioned the cloud between us, and then it should pull us into a into a nice kiting pattern. And I guess at this point, maybe I could just zoom out and speed it up. That'd be kind of cool, huh? Like this. we slow it back down now we'll actually notice that um, we have now passed the equilibrium of kiting distance they were originally hovering at 95 around or around 95 kilometers from me but that distance is increasing because you pretty much have to sit in the orbit and not disturb it and eventually these guys will get sucked towards the center just because of how chasing AI works right it's just greedy first they just keep adjusting their vector to our position so they'll end up in the middle eventually if we're faster than them but to get that initial orbit they do kind of cut a corner and they'll get closer to you so what I expect to see here assuming I survive I guess we could give a more pulse of this I expect to see these guys get closer to the center as we get closer to finishing up our uh, mining session. So let's speed it back up here and turn off that so we don't burn stuff out. All right, we have filled up our mining hold with C320 using the Jedi mind trick technique. Now, while doing this, I made a couple observations. The first being that um, it doesn't really matter if you're moving faster than them at their peak, their speed fluctuates so much that uh, they are going to get behind you as long as you can survive the initial uh, peak of damage there. The second thing is that I don't know this for certain, but I suspect that this activity you can do this with as many alts as you want at the same time. Meaning, if I wanted to, I could right now do a bunch of different things to keep this going. I could keep this orbit, which will last forever. I could jettison this or bookmark it, and keep jettisoning cans around. Nobody's going to show up and take them. They're going to get fragged by the rats. And then I can come back and scoop them with another venture. You could do that with two accounts. With all four of my accounts, what I could do right now is I could hop on my other three ventures, fleet warp to this guy, micro, keep it range 1,000, and, uh, and after like 10 minutes or so, when these get even farther from me, these aren't even going to be able to hit the guys with the micros on, especially in this system, right? I guess we'll also show the jack hand technique. Um, just because might as well. I mean, heck, there's nothing, to, no issues with it. 
start mining again. So this jack can save location or one. All right, now these guys are in. So we're gonna form a fleet. I didn't even realize you could right click form fleet even faster than the other thing I was doing. And then we're gonna warp these guys to the 13. Now, the thing is, because my speed is low, if I had like 2000 MS or 1500 MS, like these guys would already be in the middle, right? But I don't have that, obviously. We have a very slow venture. <laughs> so I'm never gonna actually get them, I think, to the middle with this speed. Ideally, if you're gonna bring in other ventures, you probably wanna be have the guys in the middle already. All right, so let's see here. I go scoop that. Yeah, they're definitely gaining ground on me. I think they, it, they're, it's kind of like a pendulum. It goes back and forth, right? So all we gotta do is just grab this gas, scoop this to the mining hold, warp back to the perch. Look at that. You can keep this setup going forever and get the whole cloud with only two accounts. I think I'd have to equip the afterburners to pull in alts to do this. And I also know that they're slower than this guy with afterburners. So I'm a bit concerned about that. I'm not sure how far I'm willing to go right now to show all of the aspects of the Jedi mind tricking, especially because I'm not really experienced in it, but I think we kind of get an idea of it, of what's going on. And um, you can kind of see how to exploit this. And you got to remember that if anybody comes in here to gank me or to, to kill me, these rats move at a thousand... Uh, meters a second they have 30 kilometer range uh, web and scram and they do crazy damage anybody here that tries to gank you anybody unless it's a group is gonna die like short of a marauder landing and like you being asleep there's no way anybody can kill you here um with normal means i guess there's probably ways people can kill you here like bombers or something but normal ganks are just Nobody's going to even bother if they know what they're doing, trying to gank you at an ICR. There's just no point. We learned that the other time when we tried to uh, find that coveter. And the other thing we haven't even touched upon is that this is a venture. <laughs> the prospect, I don't know for sure. I'm not even going to look it up, but I suspect the prospect probably has better resists, right? Maybe a lower SIG. Um, and also a, a bigger cargo base, so you don't even have to dick around with cans. You could also just uh, do a solo too with a prospect and make a good chunk of cash. So, all right, I'm gonna dismount from this and um, we're gonna call it. But that was pretty fascinating. I, I didn't anticipate it being that exploitable. Like, we could definitely bring our alts in there. Trust me. Once we. Get more comfortable and do some more of those blah 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 we're gonna have a conga line of ventures and or prospects all right so this is what we got from the jedi mind trick okay it is 1200 okay so this is the jedi mind trick and these were the two ninjas so appraisal for the ninjas we got uh, 90 mil. For the... Jedi Mind Trick we got. 40 mil. And remember, the Jedi Mind Trick was just one venture. One venture. So remember, if you have a prospect, you're making... You're making 100 mil per cargo. Doing that. And if you do it properly with, I guess, some skills, you literally just... It's, it's actually... Perhaps one of the act the truly only AFK things you can do in this game because you don't have to be there Once you start it and get hit equilibrium, right? All you have to do is set it up and nobody will gank you get all your money And you can go back for more too. I'm pretty sure so either way um, Quick like 130 mil we basically ninja two things for 25 minutes 30 minutes total Probably like 25 minutes total and then we did that Jedi mind trick and boom 150 mil
Easy. Um, I just went into my static and there's literally bubbles on my D scan. Never seen that before. Where might these bubbles be? Oh, 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 they are on this signature. We found it. Look at that. Okay, so this, the dude that has the bubbles down right now is a Varga pilot. MGLA, I believe that is the name of the corp that owns this place. Where the heck are they? There they are. See MGLA Holdings? Okay. So, they bubble off. I mean, I'm no expert on bearing in wormholes, but like, bubbling your hole is like... Not worth the effort instead of critting it and putting a scout on it, you know what I mean? Like, why drop bubbles on it? I don't understand that. Alright, I've never seen that before. Oh, it's a skinned Forza. <laughs> Whoa, that's cool, that's new. To me, at least. Hold on, let me look at this. Yo, that's very, that's very pleasing. Normal Forza is ugly. That's really nice. Oh, they put it right above the planet, too. Smart. The aesthetics, it's very important. They got a nice little setup here. They farm out of the C5. And their Vargers as a fleet with PvP ships on standby. See, that's the kind of corp that I could potentially, you know, find myself having fun with. A group that doesn't just bear like you. Bear and also fight the people that fight you. That's fun. And not just, like, outmass them and scare them off, but, like, actually kill them. I respect that. Alright, so I gotta, I gotta record this. This dude just in my wormhole and presumably saw the names of my ventures, which are just, like, a bunch of different... Like, languages saying hi, basically. And, um... He said, Wow... China. Which I think maybe he saw the Chinese here. Next to the Russian. He tried to communicate with me somehow. I don't know why. It's very uncommon to talk in local in J-Space. In fact, since we've come out here, the only time I've ever seen local actually flash was when we said good fight when we got killed with that Astra House. So, very uncommon to see people talking here. And I looked at his Z kill, and he just lost a Typhoon at Jitta earlier. You know, like, these guys lose, like, Vargers and stuff, so. I mean, I don't know how to parse this. I don't understand what this is all about, but I just found out where that dude came from. A shuttle here. I don't think they saw me. So there, and a wandering opened up in my system. I didn't notice. It was going to go to the class two. It'd be hilarious if I could catch that Sinesis. It was slow or something. Sure. There's the Sinesis on the scan. He's going to warp to here. There he is. <laughs> Called it. I mean. Let's see, does he sit there or does he go right through? Goes right through. I'm gonna follow him. See if he's slow. Probably not. He's gonna go to the high hole. Oops, I'm clicking orbit. Probably no way I catch him here. Yeah, no, he's already gone. Somebody's scanning this system that I'm mining in. Let's see if they, uh... Go for the venture kill. You can pretty much watch people scan you down. See how it went from zero probes to four probes to now eight probes on ten? So now we move to five. Now we wait for this to fill up. So there's one. You just spam D-scan. Or, uh... 
yeah, whatever your hotkey is. We'll probably see more here in a second. Okay, there they are. All eight. So he's got a good read on it. So this is kind of why I like to descan with cones before I, you know, attempt to hunt somebody because it's so obvious when someone scans you down if they're descanning. The fact that you can do this venture mining as a nomad with honestly like less worries. Like if you think about it, if you're a null and you're like ratting with, with an Ishtar nowadays, I guess that's what people do. When I quit, people were to carry a ratting. That's what I was doing with one of my characters. But now, like, I guess you can't do that. So you're just Ishtar ratting. Like, dude, you Ishtar rat for so long just to pay for the Ishtar. You know, a venture you you mine for like ten minutes. No, not even ten minutes. Seriously, like five minutes, and you've paid for like five ventures. Just cannot go wrong with this setup. It's so breezy. And you have everything going for you too. Oh, look, 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 look. Look at that. See that? Estero. He's trying to lock me up. Not even close, baby. See, we were ready for that. We saw the scam. We knew it was happening. We're out. It's so funny. In the middle of talking about how I've never been attacked, never been... There he is, the Yastero. So I warped to zero, I noticed that, and immediately declocked. <laughs> uh, he, gave, he had a chance to warp to 100, I think. That was pretty nuts. That was the first time I've ever had anything happen to me when I was mining gas. And it was so, so telegraphed. Like, we went through, like, a whole lecture about probe scanning while he scanned us down, and then he shows up lackadaisically, like, forever after the fact. <laughs> that was actually really funny. Alright. After a trip to Jeddah, we are now back on track. We have successfully restocked our Loki. We're going to be a lot more careful with it moving forward. Thankfully, most of our kill marks are on the Proteus, which is the only thing that matters. But more than that, although the Loki is a very important part of our setup, because it's our control element in BVP, it clears the sights for us, etc. We also picked up another ship. No, it's not the orca in the background. We bought a Sveeple. This is one of my favorite ships of all time alongside the Dreamiel. This was one of the ships I kind of cut my teeth on back when it was bustedly overpowered. I would sit in Tama and just shoot frigates at the gate. It was pretty fun. But this ship in particular as we discussed briefly earlier, uh, is really quite powerful out here in uh, Anoikis for one reason. There's multiple reasons, but one in particular. When a hole is small, you can only fit certain things into it. And this is one of the most powerful things you can fit into those holes. So basically, now when we get those C-13s, we can go into it with the Sveeple. And granted, I have it set up for PvP right now. But, we're gonna put some artillery on it and what's not. And get it going. Oh yeah, I'm in the Loki. Uh, but, this thing is gonna be able to clear sights for us. It's gonna be able to scan down players and kill them inside of shattered. This is gonna give us a lot of control in shattered holes. Additionally, we're gonna be able to take this through small holes into null sec which will be fabulous because we can potentially kill people with this uh, people pretty easily. I mean, it's not the most powerful ship, but for its size, I mean, it's it's up there, you know. This is one of the one of the great ones. So, 
Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And now we have a trifecta of Minimitar ships. We have the Saber, we have the uh, Svipel, and the Loki back, so... Can't wait to see what is in the future here with these, uh, these, these pools. Should be fun. Alright, guys. In this episode, we did a lot of things. We screwed around with some marauders and picked up a stork kill. We did a couple ghost sites. We failed miserably on the first one. We got some loot out of the second one. Killed some explorers. We killed a raven, which was the highlight of the video for me. Um, we saw some shenanigans around Jitta. We got through another gate camp. We talked about alts at length. We watched some Hictors roll a hole. I showed you my idea for a prototype offline mapper. I showed you how I shadow my hacking character with a tier 3 cruiser to keep him safe. Uh, we looked at wormholes and their size and how to differentiate them. And then I lost a Loki to a ghost site, which was tragic. But after that, we took a really, really long look at the Jedi mind trick technique. And I think we have a pretty good idea how that works. And we finished up the episode by dodging an Astero gank and buying a Loki Sveeple and resetting. So we are ready to go for the next one. And I, uh, Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.